A very good morning out there. Welcome to another live broadcast. My name is Isaiah Phillips Akintola. This morning we're going to take time to pray. We've not had the time for a long time to pray. We've been doing a lot of training. We've been doing a lot, a lot of teaching, a lot of building up. But I just sense in my spirit this morning that we need to take some time to really press into the presence of God in the place of prayer and intercession. A lot of things happening around our lives that needs prayer that needs intercession that needs our focus and of course that needs us to remain standing on the wall as watchmen that's who we are so this morning we are going to pray join me this morning as we seek the heart of god as we seek the face of god thank you so much uh Roderi, for joining this morning we're going to take time to pray we want to pray we want to sink into the into the river of the spirit we want to flow we want to allow god to take us into the enriched realities of, of the things he's been saying to us. I mean, it's one thing for us to have truth and have the word of God in our life. It's another thing for us to pray and impress those truths into our spirit man. That's what we want to do this morning. Just take a few you know, time to, to, to pray in the presence of God and just pray these things into our heart, into our spirit. So this is what we want to do this morning. Father, we... We come before you. <clears throat> we appreciate, oh God, your invitation once again to, to come. Thank you for grace to respond to your voice, to your mind, to your desire, to your intention. This morning, Father, as we come, Lord, as I come with my brethren, oh God, I ask, Father, that you will grant us once again inroad, oh God, into the richness of your spirit, oh God. Grant us grace, Father, to behold the things that you are impressing upon, yes, the hearts of your church, the ecclesia. Thank you, Father, this morning that once again we realize and we recognize our place, our position, yes, as priests, as watchmen, O oh God, yes, who will not give you rest and who will give ourselves no rest until Zion becomes a priest in the earth. We thank you, Lord. We understand the power of prayer. And this is why, Lord, this morning, we are sanctifying ourselves, O oh God, and sacrificing our, our, ourselves and our time, O oh God, to pray. So we thank you. Lord, we lay aside this morning, yes, every distraction, every superfluity of nothingness. We lay aside, O oh God, everything, O oh God, that can limit or hinder our minds, O oh God, from cooperating with your desire. We push aside this morning, yes, Father, thoughts that are carnal, everything that is of the flesh, that is of the earthly order and we lay them down father we have come lord to be yes to be lifted in your presence in the place of prayer we have come to seek your face we've come to seek your mind we have come lord to be developed to be empowered we have come to be equipping the spirit oh god so we thank you once again this morning that you will grant us access oh god into yes the treasures of your heart you will help enable us oh god to flow like a river into the streams of your spirit father we thank you oh hallelujah Thank you for your spirit this morning. Oh, Lema Sipra da Vazikiye, Garadado Shipreve Nono Zindaya. Yes, Father, Mandarabo, we come, Lord, we edify ourselves in your presence. Thank you, Spirit of God. Thank you. You are the one that teaches us how to pray. For indeed, we know not how to pray. But your Spirit, yes, makes intercession for us on our behalf. Yes, O oh God. And you make intercession on with us. So we pray this morning, Lord. And as you pray with us, as you pray in us, that we will, yes, flow in the river of your counsel. Yes, that your will will find inroad. Your, your will will find position in, in us this morning to alight. You will find a place of rest in us this morning. We invite you, Lord, to come. Yes, come take your place. Take your place. Have your way. Take your place. Have your way. Teach us, Lord, this morning. Show us, yes, the desire, the desire of your of your will. Reveal to us this morning, yes, where we need to flow in accordance to your, your inspiration, in accordance to your counsel, Father. We thank you. Holy Spirit, guide us, lead us, teach us, instruct us, build us this morning. We yield ourselves to you. We present our lives to you as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable. It is our reasonable service. We conform not to this world, but we are transformed this morning by the renewing of our mind. As we get transformed, we come, Lord, and we present, yes, our, our very homes, family. We present our loved ones 
We present your church, yes, to you. We present in the name of Jesus everything that you have placed, oh God, yes, under our care, under our spiritual care. We stand this morning. We receive, Father, grace, strength. We receive capacity. We receive revelation, understanding. We receive the wisdom to build, oh God, in accordance to your divine counsel. And therefore, we pray this morning. We do away with the old. We do away with yesterday. We've come, Lord, to be renewed, to be refreshed, to be empowered, to be energized. Yes, Father, we've come, Lord, in the renewness of our mind. We receive the mind of Christ this morning. We receive, yes, in the name of Jesus, the, the heartbeat of our Lord Jesus Christ. We receive in the name of Jesus the very counsel of Christ this morning. Let your kingdom come. Let your will be done. Let your will be done. As it is done in heaven, as it is established in heaven, let it be done. Let it be done on earth. Let it be done in our earth. Let it be done, yes, in the lives, oh God, yes, that you have committed into our, into our hands, in the life, yes, of our community, family, city, in the life, oh God, of our neighbors. In the name of Jesus, we proclaim this morning, Father, that your will will find inroad in the earth this morning. We pray your will, yes, to be manifest into every facet of life in the name of Jesus. As we stand in the gap, Lord, this morning, we proclaim and we declare, oh God, that the nations will once again, yes, we'll feel the impact of your glory. Father, we understand the importance of, yes, our position as intercessors, oh God. We have come this morning as priests, oh Father. We receive a cleansing, a washing, a change, oh God. Yes, Father, of our of, of our of our priestly garment this morning. Yes, we are renewed in the spirit of our mind. We put off the old, yes, Father. We wear in the new. We come in the place of, of intercession. We stand this morning in the gap. We pray, Father, yes, that you you will this morning, Father, be glorified in the earth. You'll be glorified in the heavens. You'll be glorified in the earth. You'll be glorified in this temple. You'll be glorified in our minds, in our thoughts, our imagination this morning. We present them all. We lay them down all before you this morning. We thank you for your spirit. Your spirit that is enabling us. Your spirit that is empowering us. It is through your spirit that we can do valiantly. It is through your spirit that we can walk through, yes, the wall. It is through your spirit that we can leap over walls. It is through your spirit this morning that we can glide and go forth, Lord. It is through your spirit that we can run with horses and overtake. It is through your spirit this morning, yes, that we can be energized. You are the one, yes, who have given us power to do all things. Yes, you said I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Yes, Father, we have come to be strengthened this morning we exchange the strength of yesterday father yes for for this new for this brand new day father we we let go we we forget the former things oh god we embrace the new in the name of jesus we press further into that which your spirit is, is revealing yes to creation we press into it in the name of jesus we proclaim that we are on a transition we enter into the full reality of your counsel this morning we honor you oh god Oh, hallelujah. We honor you, Father. I'd just like to read uh, our scripture. Uh, the main scripture we use in prayer. I'm just going to go back to Isaiah chapter 50 again. Verse 4. We're going to take it from, from verse 4. The sovereign Lord has given me an instructed tongue. To know the words that sustains the weary. He has awakened me morning by morning. Awaken my ears to listen like one being taught. Being taught. The sovereign Lord has opened my ears. The sovereign Lord has opened my ears. And I've not been rebellious. And I've not been rebellious. I have not turned my back. I have offered my back to those who beat me. My chest to those who pulled out my head. I did not hide my face from mocking and spitting. Because the, so because the sovereign Lord is my help. You see, there are things that we actually thought we would not be able to bear. We would not be able to go through. We would not be able to carry but when we begin to factor the position of God in our life, <clears throat> when we begin to position, when we begin to position ourselves in the heart and in the mind, in the will of God, we will discover that we are able 
You know, most of the time when I read the scripture, I always focus on just the you know the the you know the the verse five and the and the and the six, excuse me, the verse four and the five. But the six also speaks to us <clears throat> in terms of how we need to you know respond amen, to the challenges of life. Let me read verse 6 again. It says, I have offered my back. This is a position of sacrifice. It says, I have offered my back. I have offered my back to be beaten. To be beaten. Jesus offered his, his back to be beaten. Situations are going, are, are taking place all across the world, particularly in the church. And of course, in, the, in, 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 our, in, our, in our cities. And it, 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 they're looking for people who will stand, who will sacrifice, okay, who will you know, be there, who will be visible. But most time we are hidden somewhere. We're not, we're not doing what we need to do. And we cannot do what we need to do because we have not come into the full revelation of what it means to be an intercessor, to stand in the gap. Sometimes stand, to be standing in the gap means that we will be beaten, all right? Because people, will, people, who, people who do not understand, who, who are not relating to what God, amen, desire, okay, would challenge our position, would challenge our stand. But this is what it takes for us, amen, to be an instrument, to be an ambassador, to be vo a, a voice of God in the air, to be, amen, a carrier of his conscience and, and a revealer of his intention. It means that people will resist us, they will challenge us, but we should not be afraid to be beaten at the back. It's a call to sacrifice. We say love is sacrifice. One of the things the Lord has been sharing and, sh you know, and, and, and saying to us of late, amen, is, is the revelation of his love. You see, it's love that will propel us to pray. Love woke me up this morning and said, Isaiah, go get up and pray. You need to pray. You need to, you need to sanctify the atmosphere. You need to do what you need to do. As much as you may feel, okay, I still need to sleep, but uh, it's time to rise up. It's, it's called sacrifice. And, and he's our great reward. He's our great reward. He says, I have not, I have not turned my back. I, I've given my back to be bitten. This is what we are doing. When we take our post, then we take our position. When we take our stand, yes. But all of this, of course, begins from the sovereign Lord, the sovereign Lord has awakened me. Yes. The sovereign Lord has instructed me. He's awakened me. He's sustained me. He's given me the ability, amen, to sustain the weary. He's, he's given me the grace, amen, to know how to speak to those who are weary, amen. He says he has awakened me morning by morning. We want to thank him this morning that once again, not only are we awakened to see the light of a new day, but we are awakened in him. We are awakened in the revelation of his counsel for this new day, for this new season. We are awakened, amen. He's awakened us to that which his, his spirit, amen, is, is proclaiming and demanding. That we are not just, you know, just loafing around somewhere. We're just, you know, going through, you know, the motions of life. No, that we are living our life in the relevancy, amen, of, of the voice of his, of his intention for this brand new day. That our prayer, amen, is to see that his will be done in the earth if God's will 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 be done in our lives, in our homes, in our community, in our city. Amen. We have to be the executor, amen, of that which has been proclaimed and declared. Prophecy must be fulfilled through the power of intercession. When when Daniel heard and learned, amen, that 70 years had come, amen, he began to posture himself, amen, in the place of prayer to see that that which has been spoken, amen, is activated in the spirit. Yes, this is what we do when we begin to pray, you know, effective prophetic prayer. We, we begin to bring to pass. It's like we awaken that to which has been sleeping and we want to see them manifest in time. And this is what we want to do this morning. This is what we're doing this morning. That our prayer will begin to awaken, amen, those due prophecy, amen, those due realities. There are things that have been spoken over our life, over our home, family. There are prophetic words, amen, that are, that are lingering in the realm of the spirit over our city, amen, over our nation, amen. There are things that need to take place in our government there are things that needs to be manifest amen in in our community in the life of our neighbors you, you know in this generation amen that are waiting where are they where are the intercessors amen where are those who can go before the lord where are those amen who can stand and make demand he said make ask of me and i will give to you if we don't ask we do not we're not going to receive if we're not seeking we're not going to find if we're not knocking the door it's not going to be open you know, some Christians have this idea. They have this 
you know, believe this notion that, well, you know, whatever will come to pass will come to pass. Yes, prophecy, amen, has been spoken. God's will, God's counsel has been revealed. But we have to be, amen, the executor. The Bible says in the book of Psalm, amen, the, these ones have been called to execute the judgment that is written. It is written. It is written. But if you don't execute what is written, it's not going to happen. Amen. This is why government fails because people, amen, do not do not execute, amen, the, the, the system, the things that have been written. All right. Yes. All of these countries, you know, that we're seeing that they're, they're falling around, falling apart. Amen. The corruptions that we are seeing in our nation, there are there are systems, there are there are laws, policies passed, amen, to, to, to mitigate, to stop these things. But nobody is executing it. That's why somebody can steal and, and get away with it. Come on. We have to be the executors of that which has been spoken. Of course, it's not by might, it's not by power. We execute in the place of prayer. We execute, amen. When we know what has been written, like I said, Jesus lived his life, amen, on, on the understanding of what was written on his behalf. When we know what has been written, amen, we have to begin to go and do what? And begin to embellish those things and begin to proclaim them into reality, amen. We begin to proclaim it. The things that have been written over my life, I, I, it's my position, it's my duty, it's my responsibility, amen, to begin to pray those things into manifest station yes that's why the power of prayer amen has been given to us amen when you ask you will receive the bible says everyone who asks receiveth you receive amen it says seek you will you will you will find knock the door will be open hallelujah so let's take our position let's take our posture and begin to execute things amen that have been spoken that have been written on our behalf hallelujah there are there are prophetic you know uh, 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 you know uh, words that has gone forth over this land over this nation amen i believe that sticks is it they said every nation deserves the, the the kind of government they they you know they you know they have maybe to a certain degree yes because people are not are not making demand they are not they are not expressing their demand but you see we that know better all right we can begin to say yes this is the kind of government we want this is the kind of rulership this is the kind of authority we want in our nation in our land in our home amen this is the kind of things we want to see happen hallelujah what do we do as intercessors amen we go before the lord and begin to superimpose that which heaven has released that's why the the scripture say we must pray his kingdom come earth must turn back to amen god's original counsel and purpose creation is groaning and waiting in anticipation for the manifestations of the sons of god sons of god are carriers of the will of god sons of god are executors amen of the will of god creation is in bondage they're crying they're waiting for us amen get up and pray don't sleep hallelujah this is why we're sounding this alarm this morning amen we must pray and see that what god has proclaimed and declared over our life over our home over our family amen the kind of men we ought to be the kind of women we ought to be the kind of family we ought to be we have to pray them into manifestation what do you see that's why prayer must be birthed in the place of vision hallelujah and vision comes through the power of the prophetic spirit amen as we align with the power of the prophetic spirit and take our position amen in that governmental authority we begin to execute the judgment that is written we execute judgment this morning regarding our life regarding in our space home regarding our family regarding our city we refuse to fold our hands we refuse to take what the enemy has offered to us we refuse in the name of jesus to be to be to be directed by circumstance no we proclaim and we declare things are changing right now because the word of the lord has gone forth we begin to proclaim right now that the prophetic counsel of god <clears throat> over our life the righteousness of god the justice system of god yes in the name of jesus right now we proclaim that the court yes is in is in session. We declare in the name of Jesus that the court is in session. Yes, the will of God, yes, is being executed. The counsels of God is being manifest. And we begin to superimpose that which heaven has proclaimed and declared upon the every area of our lives, upon every area, yes, of our space. We decree and we declare that the knowledge of the glory of God is covering the earth once again as the water covers the sea. We say the fear of God right now is flowing like a river. We say the counsel of God, yes 
yes is flowing into the nations uh, we say yes the knowledge of God the will of God wisdom knowledge understanding right now yes is flowing into the nations uh, hearts have been awakened to the realities of God uh, in this brand new day we say in the name of Jesus people are waking up they have been awakened from from that dead situation there is an awakening in the spirit uh, awakening in the spirit we sound the alarm this morning we sound the trumpet we proclaim this morning awake unto righteousness awake unto truth awake awake South Africa awake in the name of Jesus Mozambique awake in the name of Jesus Namibia awake in the name of Jesus Botswana awake in the name of Jesus Malawi awake in the name of Jesus we proclaim you to be awakened right now yes be awakened be awakened Zambia be awakened in the name of Jesus yes in the name of Jesus we proclaim you Lusoto be awakened in the name of Jesus yes be awakened be awakened be awakened in Namibia be awakened in the name of Jesus let the voice of God awaken yes sons of righteousness uh, in your in your walls awake take your place this morning let the sons of righteousness take their place uh, let the church be awakened uh, every spirit of weakness uh, every spirit of slumber is time to go right now we proclaim an awakening an awakened generation to take their place awakened generation bold generation a generation of righteous people in the name of Jesus the Bible says the meek will inherit the earth yes the righteous will inherit the earth be awakened to your duty in the name of Jesus we proclaim the kingdom of God has come the kingdom of God has come near you this morning the will of God is established yes upon your walls this morning we declare that we are the Nehemiahs of our day we are repairing that which has been broken and shattered that which has been burnt we are repairing right now we declare yes the fear of God in the hearts of men in the minds of men to do what is right in government to do what is right in leadership in the name of Jesus we speak for this morning yes father we proclaim yes to your ways yes to your will yes to your counsel yes to your desire and your intention in the earth father we are the sons that have been awakened morning by morning thank you though thank you Lord that you are instructing us and we are receiving divine instruction oh Rabba Basse oh Nderebaya Rabba Katizi Plene Mosundorobo we have not we have not shied away from what you have called us yes to stand for to stand with we stand with truth this morning we declare this morning that truth is being exalted truth is being proclaimed over our nation over our land truth truth righteousness truth justice Bible says the kingdom of God is righteousness peace and joy in the Holy Spirit we decree let the righteousness of God right now yes flow into the land let the pillar of righteousness be established yes in the name of Jesus in in our government in the life of those yes who are who are yes definers of 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 the of the policies that governs in the name of Jesus righteousness peace and joy in their heart right now they will stand for God they will not compromise they will not give into the darkness they will not give into the lies of the enemy they will not give into falsehood in the name of Jesus let the sons of righteousness arise in the name of Jesus in government let them arise all, ac all across the land all across southern region in the name of Jesus all across the Sadek region in the name of Jesus all across Africa all across the continent in the name of Jesus awake right now in the name of Jesus we proclaim the sons of righteousness to be awakened in government in leadership yes among our presidents in the name of Jesus among our rulers in the name of Jesus we come against the spirit of tyranny we come against the spirit of wickedness we come against the spirit of destruction we come against wicked rulership in the name of Jesus sons of righteousness awake take your place truth we prevail truth we prevail truth we prevail is our job to pray that the kingdom of God be established among nations that the will of God yes be established in this crucial time we are pressing yes to the day where we are seeing yes the manifestation of evil on a greater level but we declare in the name of Jesus yes they shall not proceed further we take our stand this morning we are yes the ones heaven has given to the earth to continue to to take our stand we 
we are the one that is withholding and, and stopping, pushing back the works of darkness. We take our position in light. We are the sons of light. We shine for this morning. We proclaim the illuminating light of God all across the continent, all across the land. We expose evil. We declare in the name of Jesus. They will, God, you will use them to expose themselves. They will not go further in the name of Jesus. They will proceed no further. Iniquity will not rule over us. Ungodliness and unrighteousness will not rule over our children. In the name of Jesus, we proclaim this morning that we speak life to the seven mountains. We begin to decree and declare this morning that the will of God, the counsel of God is manifest over our, over our land, over our nation, over the, over the spirit and soul and body of our leader, of our president. In the name of Jesus and those who are in the parliament, we proclaim, we declare, they will be awakened unto justice, unto righteousness. They will do what is right in the name of Jesus. We come against the spirit of corruption, wickedness. In the name of Jesus, when those in government are, 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 are bound and, and captured by corruption, they destroy the lives of the people. They destroy the future of the people. Father, we declare this morning, awaken them, O oh God. Awaken them to truth. Awaken, awaken our government to righteousness. Help them to see the importance of standing for truth, of standing for what is right. In the name of Jesus, we decree and we declare every law that is passed, every system, every philosophy, yes, that promotes, yes, that elevates iniquity. In the name of Jesus, we say you shall proceed no further. We arise against you. In the name of Jesus, we war, we war against iniquity. We war against perversion. We war against wickedness. In the name of Jesus, we declare in the name of Jesus, iniquity shall proceed no further. In the name of Jesus, let the sons of righteousness arise. Father, we thank you, Lord, for technocrat. We thank you, Father, for godly leaders. We thank you for men of righteousness. We thank you for women of truth. We thank you, Father, for the Deborahs are, are being awakened in this brand new day. Thank you, Lord, that you're positioning your honor all across the land, all across the continent. We thank you, Lord. It's our day in Africa. Africa is arising. Africa is taking a place in the name of Jesus. The power, yes, Lord, to walk in, in the spirit, yes, sir, of government, governmental truth. The power, yes, to walk in integrity. The power of ethical leadership in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for the outpouring of your spirit right now. You are pouring your spirit. When your spirit is poured out, yes, people are changed. People are transformed. People are equipped. We thank you for what you're doing right now. Yes, Lord, your will is being established all across the land, all across the globe, all across the continent. This is our day. We take our place. We position ourselves. We trumpets in our mouth. We sound the alarm on the holy hill of the Lord. We proclaim that let there be a going forth of a generation of righteousness. Let there be a going forth of a people of holiness. Let there be a going forth of a people of truth and integrity. In the name of Jesus, let the kingdom of God come. Let his will be done on earth as it is done in heaven. We build according to the pattern of heaven. We build according to the pattern of heaven. We build according to the pattern of heaven. We release in the name of Jesus a new order of priesthood born after the pattern after the order of Melchizedek king priest in the name of Jesus king priest in the name of Jesus people who have power who have authority who have dominion who have kings who have riches and wealth yet they are priest in the name of Jesus people that will not abuse their position that will not abuse their authority that will not abuse their government and their leadership authority but yet they will stand on behalf of her we thank you this is the pattern we find in Melchizedek he said Jesus himself after the order of Melchizedek he was a high priest father we thank you this morning that your priesthood is being manifest in this earth oh God as you change the old as you change the garment as you change the voice of the old as you change leadership at the gate father we pray this morning for leadership that are priest we pray for leadership that are priest we pray for leadership that can feel we pray for leadership that can stand on behalf of her we pray for leadership that understand what the people need that can feel yes the Bible says Jesus was touched with the infirmity yes of the people for we have not an high priest uh, that cannot be tortured uh, with the feelings uh, with the feelings uh, with the feelings with the infirmities of the people he was tempted at all point uh, yet without sin this is the kind of leadership we pray for we seek for we pray for leadership uh, with the face with the heart oh God of priesthood our problem is we've got leaders Hannah, that are not priests and so they, they abuse their position they abuse their authority when we become leaders 
without, be, without being priest, we will abuse our office. So we pray this morning, Father, give Siri Ramaphosa the heart, O oh God, of a priest. Because a priest can feel what the people feel. A priest understands the heart of God. A priest seeks to do the will of God. And a priest seeks to take, yes, the need of the people on behalf of God. He represents God to the people and he represents the people before God. Yes, Father, Melchizedek is a king priest. You understand, friends? That's, that's, some, that's something the Lord is opening my eyes to see. Melchizedek is not just a king and he's not just a priest. He's a king priest. Yes, he's a servant leader. Father, this is what we pray as we enter into this third day, into this dimension, oh God. Yes, of a new thing that you're doing with your ecclesia. Give us king priest, oh God, order. Give us the king priest order. Give us the Melchizedek order. Give us, oh God, a people, yes, who are indeed known in the earth, but they are not of the earth. A people who know that they are in the earth for a reason to serve. Yet they have honor. They have glory. They have power. They have position of authority. Yet they will not lord it over the people. Father, this is our cry this morning. Release from your church, oh God. As you begin to reconstruct and re-engineer your church again, give us a people that are transformed. Reform, oh God. Empower, oh God. Endowed and induced by the spirit of a king priest. Ola masiki yanda. Bruno Sike Baba Develunda Subre de Veyebele. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord Jesus. Nema Shanda Rabaho Tayada. The scripture said Jesus will not take a position of a priest except. He waits for him that give it to him. We wait this morning. Thank you, Father. No one take this honor upon himself. He must be called by God. Just as Aaron was so Christ also did not take upon himself. Even in the old Levitical Aaronic priesthood, you have to be called. There's something that is established when people are called. There are men who've called themselves and, and have imposed themselves upon the people. No one that they take advantage. No one that they steal from the people. No one that they abuse the people. No one that the nation is in disarray because of bad leadership. But this morning we're proclaiming and holy injunction upon them. We declare a new day. We declare a new order. We declare a priesthood. A, a, an authority that is born after. A priesthood of heaven. You see that's one thing about the Melchizedek priesthood. It's a priesthood. Amen. That is born from heaven. That is established in heaven. Yet it reflects something that is relevant to the earth. Hallelujah. So Christ also did not take upon himself the glory. Of becoming. The glory of becoming. There are people who want to become, but they have not been chosen. They want to become. They have the ambition, but they have not been they have not been selected. Heaven has not point at them. They have not been selected. They've not been they have not been called. They've not been consecrated. They have not been inaugurated. They have not been poured. The oil has not been poured upon them. Therefore, they do what they feel is right in their own eye. He did not take upon himself. Of becoming a high priest, but God said to him, Father, we need men once again in our day who can hear your voice, who can go out, yes, because we have spoken to them, who can save the day because they heard your voice, because they heard you call their name. He said, Jeremiah, I have called you and I've anointed you. Before you were in your before you were shaped and formed in your mother's womb, while you're still in your mother's womb, you've been consecrated, you've been separated. We need men who are anointed by God, who are separated, consecrated, who've been sanctified, yes, to lead us, to lead us. The battle of the last is the battle of leadership. The battle of leadership. If you see what's going on in America right now, is a battle of leadership. Now we are no, we know where America is heading. 
Is it that they head to us the position of righteousness or they head to us the position of destruction? So it is in our nation. So it is in every nation. That, that these are the battles of the end of the days. We are, we are entering, yes, the heart of the battles of the, of the end time of the last days. We're not just talking about a man, an antichrist. We're talking about a, a system, a two-order system. Yes, and one will flow towards the direction of, of the man of sin. All right? Righteousness must prevail. We have to stand and decree and make sure, amen, that the people are not in slumber, that the people do not vote in a wickedness, amen, unto, unto the position of power, that the people, amen, are not leered. You see, now their mouth is sweet. I mean, I'm listening to some of these American, you know, uh, uh, you know guys coming to, into leadership. Now they are quoting scripture. They are quoting Bible. The last time Obama was quoting Bible, this lady that is about to be, you know, uh, uh, that is vying for, you know, Biden's, uh, 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 you know, second place, you know, in, in, in government. She's also quoting Corinthians. You see, if we don't know the word of God in this last day, somebody will come with sweet mouth and they will lie to us and leer us. I always say it, you see, when, 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 when people don't have truth, when the church do not have the truth, it is easy for us to be leered, amen, to accept the lie because somebody comes and say, thou say the Lord, or somebody quote the scripture to us. Have you noticed that whenever it's election time, they always use what we love. They use what the people, you know, what the people can relate to. They know that one of the things that, you know, Donald Trump is God, all right, is the evangelicals. So they say, okay, we'll, we'll also use the scripture. We'll use the Bible. It shall not be so. No. I'm like, I'm, I'm supporting everything Donald Trump has done, but I know one thing, the will of God will stand, the counsel of God. Whatever be the case, amen, what we want to see is that the will of God, listen friends, the counsel of God regarding the nations has been established. The purposes of God will stand, but it is for us to understand the counsel of God, amen, to, to understand the place and the position of God. We don't want to vote, amen, into power. People that will take our right to pray. People that will take our right to gather and to worship people that will shut down the church people that will tell us no it is not it is not our authority amen to gather and to seek the face of god that will tell us that they don't want our children to know god that they will tell us that they don't they don't want amen our children to serve god they will tell us that our children can do whatever they want to do even if they are not mature enough we've got to be wise we've got to open our eyes the bible says those who are wise would direct many are we, are we being awakened to wisdom? Are we being directed to wisdom? Let's not vote and do things by sentiment. We have to allow the word of God to define, amen, our values and our model. The problem we have today in the church is that people are going to, to church, but they do not have Christian values. They do not have, amen, biblical kingdom value system. And this is why many will fall. Many will be deceived and many will be lured away. It's time for us to pray. There has to be an awakening. What value do we stand? for when we say we are christian what do we stand for what does that mean when we say we are believers amen what drives that's why you see we have to return to a christianity that is propelled by values not by trend we have to return amen to a to a to a fellowship to a religion if you will amen to a christianity that is driven by philosophy amen not not, not by trend not by what is nice and, and 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 good no no not 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 by materialism what drives our values you see islam is driven by values in the early century, Christianity used to be driven by values. Today, Christianity is driven by, by trend. It's driven by, you know, names and, 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 and denominations and, and factions. Come on. You've got to be awakened. Friends, this is a new day. If we don't sound this alarm, many, many will be deceived. Bible says many, many in the valley. Yes, multitude, multitude in the valley of decision. We've got to be awakened. As the Lord brings us again amen, to the valley amen, of dry bones. Remember, a few days ago, the Lord <laughs> was speaking to us from that position. I, I felt again the Spirit of God is saying, bring them to the valley. You see, we, 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 need, we need the Ezekiels of our day, amen, that will be brought to the valley. And look at this death thing, amen, and begin to prophesy as the Spirit command. The Bible says, and he commanded me, speak life, breathe life unto this thing. We want to breathe life, amen, into that heart, into that mind, amen, that I've been captured in, in, in darkness and in blindness. We're going to speak life. 
We want, we, want, we want the nations to be awakened. We want America to be awakened. We want South Africa to be awakened. We want Botswana. We want Malawi. We want Amen, Angola to be awakened in the name of Jesus. Yes, we, wa we want Ethiopia to be awakened. We want Amen, Cote d'Ivoire to be awakened. We want Nigeria to be awakened. We want Ghana to be awakened. We want Liberia. We want Libya, Syria to be awakened. Come on. We want to be awakened unto righteousness. We want to stand for God. We want Mali to stand for God. Hallelujah. Yes, we have to pray this thing. We want to pray for those who are the war front, who are the forefront of this battle. Amen. Who are weak. We want to strengthen their hands in the place of prayer. We want to say, God, have mercy on your people. Strengthen their heart, Lord. Help them not to give up, not to give in, oh God. We want to awaken. And we also want to be awakened. We want to take our place in the place of governmental prayer. We want to take our place in, in the place, hallelujah, of governmental intercession. You say, you who make mention of the Lord, give yourself no rest and give him no rest. This is not the time to rest. Our rest is in him. Hallelujah. He's our Sabbath. But we will continue to pray and continue to bring forth and continue to push. Hallelujah. We push until something happens. We want to pray. We want to birth. We want to give birth. Hallelujah. We want to give birth to a new nation. Hallelujah. He said, behold, I do a new thing. Yes, that is our position. The position of the newness of God in the nations. The position of the newness of God in the land. The position of the newness of God. Hallelujah. In our homes, in our city, in our community, in our family. The position of newness. Amen within the structures and the philosophy of our life of our thinking come on we want to pray god this morning may your kingdom come may your will be done on earth as it is done in heaven we want to pray a new order of leadership into our nation into our land hallelujah we're believing god for the for the move of the spirit we're believing god hallelujah for the move of the spirit in this new day he said in the last day i will pour out my spirit upon all flesh your sons and your daughters they will prophesy yes you cannot prophesy without the spirit of god so before we begin to prophesy before we begin to declare before we begin to decree we must be certain that the spirit of god hallelujah is well structured is well seated in our in our heart in our lives in our mind every aspect of our mind amen has been saturated saturated captured amen in prison in the spirit of truth hallelujah we cannot but to prophesy when the word of the lord amen is released yes i will pour out my spirit upon all flesh your sons and your daughters will prophesy does that does that does that mean that in this brand new day in this new day in this day of the end that we're going to be seeing our sons and daughters rising to prophesy yes yes our sons and daughters will not be hijacked by Hollywood. No, they will not be hijacked by some culture that is perverted, that is foreign, that is alien to the values of God. We want to prophesy that our sons and daughters will prophesy the counsel of God. They will speak the mind of God. They will live for God. Amen. They will not be carried away and be captured by trend. Our youths, amen, will not be destroyed. Amen. By trend, they will not be destroyed by perversion. They will not be destroyed by sexual perversion. They will not be destroyed by ungodliness, by drugs. They will not be destroyed by alcohol we want to prophesy in the name of jesus that they will stand for god they will stand for truth they will be disciplined they will stand for righteousness they will stand for the counsels of god they will find joy in serving god they will find peace yes in the name of jesus every sense of emptiness in their life will be flushed away yes in the name of jesus drugs will be flushed off their system they will find joy they will find the true peace of god that process all human wisdom and understanding yes the peace of god will be the real god we prophesy because he said he's going to pour out and we believe there's a pouring fault there's a pouring fault and we have to begin to point people to that which amen heaven is doing in this season in time and so we declare in the name of jesus this morning let there be an awakening let the scale begin to fall off the eyes of people let their ears be unstopped to hear let their heart begin to pulsate to us. Yes, that which the Spirit of God is doing. A heart that is beating to us the desires of God. This is what we, we ask for this morning. Come on. A heart that is pulsating to us the mind of God. Lord, give us, give us passion for you. Give us hunger for you. A generation must, must be awakened, yes, with, with deep hunger. Yes, with unsatiable, uns, un, un, unsatiable hunger. Yes, in the name of Jesus. A generation must be awakened that want God more than anything in life. A generation must be awakened yes that desire god more than more than life itself more than the breath the breathe come on we pray this morning father give us holy passion give us holy hunger give us a drive for you give us a yearning for you give us a quest oh god baptize us with fire 
This is what is needed in the last day. The baptism of fire is the last baptism. Even as we are baptized unto Christ. But for us to be governmental, we need the baptism of fire. Have you noticed that's the reason why the, the guys in, 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 in the early church were able to confront nations. Were able to confront the Roman Empire. Were able to confront amen, all of these wicked you know, uh, 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 leaders of their time. is because they were baptized by fire. We can be baptized, all right, with a, you know, with a, with a, with a, with a, with the evidence of speaking in tongues and all of that, and we prophesy and all of that. That is good, you see. But there's reason, there's a reason why you are, we, we are, t we are told to wait for the baptism of fire. The baptism of fire is the baptism of passion. Hallelujah. <laughs> Thank you, Father. I just speak that in my spirit. The baptism of fire is the baptism of passion. When, when you're passionate for God and the things of God, nobody can stop you. You can't even stop yourself. Jesus says the zeal, that's the baptism of fire. The zeal of my father's house has consumed. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. You see, scripture will explain script, scripture. Has consumed me. So zeal is what is fire. That's what we need. That's what the apostles of our day need. You know, all those nice words that we, we, we preach and teach, all right, all those semantics, it's not going to save the people. All right, we need those words, we need, we need the teachings, but we need the baptism of when they see fire in your eyes, when they see the clothing tongue of fire falling upon you. Listen to this, <laughs> people will be attracted. La 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 shinda, nations will be attracted. Jesus was baptized by fire. The Bible says the Greeks, they came. They said, we want to see Jesus. The fire attracted them to him. Lord, I need the baptism of fire. I need your zeal upon my life. I need your zeal upon my home, upon my wife, upon my daughter, upon my son. Lord, upon my spiritual sons and daughters, oh God. I need your baptism of fire upon their life, each of them, oh God. I need, I need, Father. I pray, Masi Pragayando. Touch them one by one. Lord, ignite them, oh God. Let the oil be ablaze. Let the oil be ablaze with the fire. When you are anointed and set you on fire, the world cannot but to notice you. Don't carry some an anointing that is not ablaze. Aye. Spirit of God. Le Baba. Le Baba. When you carry an anointing and you are set on fire, the world cannot but to be attracted. They cannot but to come close. They cannot but to see it. Zeal is fire. We need the baptism of fire to, to engage this new day. To stand and to, and to advance in light. We need the baptism, baptism of fire. We can't, have a, we can't have a light that is not burning. If you carry the light of Jesus, <laughs> it burns. It burns. Jeremiah said, it's like fire shut up in my bones. I can't help it. I cannot help it. It's like fire that is shut up in my bones. God Almighty, this generation needs a rebaptizing of your fire. This is what we need to engage the last day. This is what we need to engage the seasons that you have brought us into. We realize we're excited about this new day. Lord, but we're not equipped yet. We're not ready yet. We need a baptism of your fire, oh God. We need an infilling, oh God. We need the oil first, yes. <laughs> People think, oh well, the oil comes. It just separates us. Yes, the oil separates you. But that oil needs to be set ablaze. The oil needs to be set ablaze with fire. Then people literally will see you, amen, ignite for God. I once read one of these old revivalists. He said, you cannot set a person on fire and such a person does not attract attention. No, no. No. Have you seen a house burning and you just walk past? You say, oh, house is burning. Wow. Nice. No. It changes your mood. It changes your... Anything you see on fire, it, it, it attracts you. It changes, amen, your sense of engagement, your sense of readiness. It changes. It causes you to do... It's a call to action. When you see things on fire, when you see people on fire, it's a call to action. The church is as cold 
as the burial ground, as the graveyard. Why? Because the church needs a baptism of fire. The church does not been baptized with fire. Fire. And yet I heard a lot of people <laughs> condemning the concept of fire. No, Jesus said they will be baptized. Amen. <laughs> With the Holy Ghost and with fire. <laughs> Jesus himself said it. He said, the zeal of the Lord has consumed me. How, why do you consume a thing? Fire. We need it. We need it. We need it. Of course, this is not a literal thing. Of course, we, anybody know that. <laughs> We're not like the cult who set themselves on fire. No, 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 no. But we're talking about a symbolic gesture. So when God, when God speaks, most of the time he speaks symbolically. <laughs> yes. When he says he's going to pour out his spirit, he's going to pour out himself. Of course, he's talking about something that is, that, is, that is powerful. That when that thing hits your spirit, man, something on the inside of you is, is, is jacked up. He's awakened. Why did he say he's going to pour out his spirit? Because only his spirit can make us do the things amen, that has been prophesied. Only his spirit that can make us stand before Hallelujah, before Goliath. Only his spirit that can make us stand before the Red Sea, amen, and stretch forth a stick and suddenly, <laughs> you see red stick, hallelujah, <laughs> opening up. Only, 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 only the spirit of God can make you, amen, look at a giant and say, today I'm going to give your head to the vultures. Only the spirit of God can make you stand before Jezebel, hallelujah, and say, this day, it's over. Only the Spirit of God can make you stand. You alone stand before a whole nation and make a decree. Where do you stand? Only. Only the Spirit of God can make you stand out as a voice in your generation. When everything is going against you. Only the Spirit of God. Only one baptized by the fire of God. It must be something that, that, is, that you're confident of. That, that, you, that you know that backs you up. you got to know that. If you don't know it... You'll be afraid. You will go and hide. The Bible says they were prophets, but they but they were in, they were hidden in a cave, in a cave, in a cave. They were hidden. When you're baptized by fire, you will go and confront Ahab. Lebaba. When you're baptized by fire, you will not be afraid. The things those guys ran away from. When they were baptized by fire, they engaged those things. Something changed in their life. They've been refined. They've been refined. Ah, we need, we need to be refined. Church, we need to be refined. We need the baptism of fire. Yes, my dear sister, we need, we need to be baptized by fire. I remember as a pastor, I used to pray, God, baptize me with your fire. I need the baptism of fire. How do you speak to change the heart of people if you have not been baptized? The Bible says they took, they took a call from, from the altar and they placed it upon the tongue of the prophet of God. They say, go in this power. Hallelujah. Come on. Tongues of fire. We need it. If we're going to engage the days of the end, if we're going to be indeed a, a, you know, a, a people that will advance in this new day and not sink and not collapse and not capitulate, amen, at, at, the, at the scream, at the roaring, amen, of Goliath, they will need to be baptized by fire. It is the baptism of fire that can make us to stand before kings, before president, and say, hear the word of the Lord, hear the word of the Lord, and you're not afraid of their prison. You're not afraid of their torture. You're not afraid of their position. You're not afraid of their guardedness. You're not afraid, amen, of, of who they are. You're not afraid of their personality. It is. You see, when you have collided with God, you ask, ask Moses. He was baptized by fire. God do not send a man that is not being baptized by fire. Paul, in the book of Ephesians, told us about different types of baptism and we need all those baptism but I believe without the baptism of fire every other baptism will not be complete they all complement each other we need knowledge we need wisdom we need understanding but guess what we need the baptism of fire that is the place 
where your zeal comes from. That is the place where your drive comes from. <laughs> that is the place where your passion comes from. That is the place, amen, where never say die. That attitude of never say die, amen. I mean, here is a man, they, they, they were just about to kill him. They were just about to kill him. <laughs> they rushed him out of the city. <laughs> he went back the next day again. <laughs> I mean, what, is he that stupid or something is driving him? The Bible says, for the joy that was set before him, amen, he endured, he endured the cross. It's the baptism of fire that causes us to do things that naturally, normally we will not be able to do. It is that thing, that holy zeal of God. It is that passion. It is that love of God. It is that thing that is moving you. The stone, the stone in the guy, he still stood. He said, behold, I see the Lord standing. It is the baptism of fire that was upon the life of Stephen. He said, Father, don't take this against them. Don't count this to their charge. Forgive them. Ah, a man has been baptized by fire, friends. Have you been baptized by fire? There's a difference between somebody, amen, who is baptized in the Holy Spirit and the one who has been toppled up with the baptism of fire. There's a big difference. There's a big difference. When you see a person passionate, amen, yet accurate in the things of God, it's because such a person is baptized by fire. Zeal does not replace, amen, knowledge and accountability, amen, and, and, and positions in the things of the Spirit. Hallelujah. Neither does the fire. The fire must complement your knowledge. And the knowledge must complement the fire. So don't say, well, well I'm have, I, I have, have zeal. No, you can have zeal without knowledge. It's still empty. Because the fire needs to work with something that you know. The fire has to work with the revelation you have. The fire has to work, hallelujah, with an understanding. The fire has to work with, 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 with grace. The fire has to work with passion and love. The fire has to work, hallelujah. Remember, remember the fire works by the oil. The oil separates you, but you can't go because you're separated. No, they've got to set that oil on fire. Because the oil, amen, the oil separates you. It, it, the oil is, is, is embellished on you. The oil, amen, flows into your life. Then they put the match. Watch this person born for the Lord. I've read about women who did things and I'm like, Lord, help me. <laughs> I've read about men who move, who move their generation. And I remember praying, I still pray, God, I want to be used like these people. Can you pay the price they paid? Waking up early hours of the day, praying, can you pay? Can you go the extra mile? Yes. You see, to do extraordinary thing, you've got to add the extra there or else it's just ordinary. To do extraordinary thing, you've got to add ordinary. And of course, that's not from me. I picked it from a quote years ago. <laughs> I used to have a quote. So I have this small book about quotations. And this guy was saying, hallelujah, <laughs> to do extraordinary things, you've got to add the extra there. You've got to add the extra there. So where you're quoting, it, don't say Isaiah Phillips. <laughs> I'm, I'm not the original owner of that quote. All right? He said, but you've got to add. You've got to add that extra there. Yes, you want to do something special. You want to do what beats other people. You want your business to go beyond the, the average. You want your home family. Then you have to do, you have to add the extra. Do you know what the extra is? Because if you do, it becomes extraordinary. You cannot live the way other people are living and you think you're going to just, you know, uh, be different. You're not going to be different. To be different means you're doing something different that they're not doing. You're going the extra mile. You know, in the world system, in the marketplace, they call it added value. It's added value. You're doing something that others are not doing. You're going to a place that... Uh, it's the same principle. Amen. Everybody is stopping on the outer court. You are pressing beyond. Hallelujah. Everybody is stopping at, you know, just revelation and all of the candlelight and all of that. And the revelation. No, no, no. You're saying, no, I, I, I thank God for the revelation of, or, you know, of, of the menorah. I thank God, amen, for the seven candlelight. I thank God for the table of shoe bread. I thank God for, you know, the, the, all of this. But uh, I, I want him. I want him. They say, you're going to die if you're going to get that. They say, yes. Death is the passage to life. Nobody enter into the holies of holy without being beheaded. You see, your passion must go beyond the, the ordinary, beyond what everybody is doing. Your passion must go beyond that man that you adore. Your passion must go beyond that woman that you're looking up to. No, if, you're, if your passion does not go beyond men to God, listen to this, you will be benchmarked by where that man stop. I'm taking you to him, not to me, no. <laughs> My, 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 my calling is to motivate you to see him. 
Not to say Isaiah Phillips and stuff there. I'm not the door. Excuse me. I'm, 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 I'm not the fi finality. I'm just a door. I want you to enter. Yes. I'm pointing you to him. To him. To him. If I be exalted, I will draw all men. I'm showing you how to enter. Some people will come and all they will collect is a miracle and they're satisfied. Some will come, all they, all they will collect is faith and that's okay for them. Some will come, all they will collect, you know, it's some nice things, some good things. Some will come, all they will collect is a nice man or a nice woman, a nice child, a nice business. But they don't want him. I want him. I don't just want things. I want all of him. And I don't want part of him. I want all. I want to be consumed by him. I want my life to become a citadel. He said, behold, the tabernacle of, of God is among men. I want him to sit in me and sit well. Not him sitting and you say, you can't sit beyond this point. You know, some people invite you into their life, into their home. But they tell you, sorry, you can't go to that place. You, you, no, no, no. That's not God. When, when he comes into your life, you must give him all the rooms. Amen. And when you come into his life, you must, you must, you, he, when you come into his life, he gives you all the room. Come, enter, enter anywhere. See, you've got to be passionate. You've got to know what you want. You've got to know what you want. You've got to know what you want. The second son, Ishmael, yes, he will be blessed, but that's it. He will not enter into inheritance. If all you're looking for in this day is just a blessing, you've missed it. <laughs> why don't you go for it? If you can come for blessing, why don't you just leave the blessing and go for inheritance? <laughs> because there is no blessing. There's no inheritance that's not come with a blessing. But it's a blessing that comes without an inheritance. We quest for God. We quest for God. Because our quest for God gives us a position. Gives us a position, hallelujah, to speak on his behalf. To proclaim and to decree and declare his mind. Ah, as we take our place in him, we, we become his eyes in the earth. We become his ears in the earth. We become, hallelujah, his conscience in the earth. Yes. The reason why people today are afraid to speak of God is because people are not baptized. People are not passionate. Th there, are no, there are very few you know, men and women who are baptized by fire. Come on, friends. Baptize me, Lord. Baptize this once, Lord. Baptize this nation with fire. Awaken a new generation. Awaken a voiceless generation that have become a voice. Awaken a passionate people, O oh God. Among our youths, O oh God. Pick them, O oh God. From the age five, six. Pick them, O oh God. Set them on fire for you, O oh God. Yes. He said in the last day you will pour out your spirit upon our flesh. These are the days of the outpouring of your spirit. You're doing great things. You're doing strange things. You're doing wonderful things in our day. Father, we do not limit this thing to ourselves, Lord. We locate our children, our grandchildren, and we say, let the outpouring of your spirit, O oh God, begin to locate them, Lord God. Begin to separate them, O oh God, in the name of Jesus, Lord God. Let their heart, let their desire, let their passion, O oh God, be after things, O oh God, that values, things, O oh God, that matters to you, things, O oh God, that will cause them to be exchanges of authority and power in their day. Father, begin to touch, begin to awaken the spirit of our sons and daughters, O oh God, to see the need, to see the need, O oh God, to stand for you and not to give in to the trend of the day, not to give in to the lies of the day, not to give in to what the enemy wants them to give in to. We say, Father, they will not be distracted and, and sidetracked, O oh God, by passing things. Help our children, O oh God, to see the eternal things. Help our grandchildren to see the eternal things, O oh God. Help us to see the eternal things. Help us to infuse in them values for eternity. Help us to show them, O oh God, what it means to love you. Help us to show them that loving you is real. That nothing can be more real. That nothing can be more truer than knowing you, than serving you. Help us to, to see as we teach them, as we build them, O oh God, to be intelligent, to be educated. Yet we want them to be a voice. Yet we want them to stand tall. Yet we want them to be the defender of the faith for their day, for their time, Lord. That it will not be said in their day, in their time. Once upon a time, people serve God. No. That they will be the voice of God in their day, in their time. Help us, Father. Help us, O God. Help us. We pray this into the life of our sons and daughters. I pray this, O God, into the life of everyone, O God, attached to this dimension of a call called the potter's gate. Let your life be a portal of truth. Let your life be a portal of grace. Let your life be a portal of truth. Let your life be a portal of mercy, of excellence. In the name of Jesus, let your life begin to release and, and, and flow out, yes, like a river into homes, family, yes, everywhere you 
you go. The Bible says he was doing good. Uh, let your life be the extension of the goodness of God. Let your life be the manifestation of the eternal counsel of God. Be the word spoken that is coming to pass in the life of people. Everywhere you go, make sure you leave a footprint uh, of God's desire, of God's counsel. Raise the bar. Raise the standard. Raise the honor in the name of Jesus. Everywhere you go, let your voice be heard uh, as a trumpet uh, in the name of Jesus. Uh, Le Palaba. The Bible says in that day, even the dead shall hear the voice of God and they shall be awakened to life. Uh, let your voice be the voice of awakening of dead things in the name of Jesus. Uh, I proclaim this day that you are baptized uh, with the fire of God. Uh, everywhere you go in the name of Jesus, uh, you will do good. Goodness and mercy uh, shall follow you in the name of Jesus. Uh, your voice, your voice, your voice, your voice will echo the voice of him. La Bahasi in Pregazienda. Awaken us, O God, unto the place of prayer and intercession. Awaken us, O God, to the place of prayer and intercession. Help us to know that praying is investing. Help us to know that praying is investing. Help us to know that praying is investing. Praying, yes, is buying share. Haha. Yes, in the company of your kingdom. Help us to know, O oh God, that praying, O oh God, is the economy of your kingdom. Help us to know halalabo, that prayer halalaba, is an investment into the future in the labo shikalabrano. Help us to know that praying is investing into the future. Into the future. Into the future. Lebaba Sipradarabayanda. Prayer. Prayer. Praying to, to bring forth a new day. Praying to bring forth a new order. Praying to bring forth a new government. Uh, praying to bring forth uh, a new a new dimension of existence in the earth. Uh, we're shifting things. We're changing things. Uh, in the name of Jesus, we're renovating things in the place of prayer. We are engineering nations in the place of prayer. We are empowering people in the place of prayer. We're bringing forth in the name of Jesus. Uh, a new technocrats in the name of Jesus. Men and women in the marketplace. Through the power of prayer. In the name of Jesus. Lead us. Mando Brano, yes, Mando, in the government, in politics, through the power of prayer, in the name of Jesus, Kandarabo, we are birthing forth Mandarabo, kingdom schools are in the place of prayer, in the name of Jesus, Mandarabo, we are praying for a new order of manufacturers are in the place of prayer, in the name of Jesus, we are, we are releasing Mandarabo, Shindarabo, doctors of the future, in the place of prayer, in the name of Jesus, we are releasing lawyers, Mando, who will defend the cause of the kingdom, in the place of prayer, in the name of Jesus, state men, we are releasing them, in the name of Jesus, lawmakers are in the place of prayer. In the name of Jesus, senators are in the place of prayer. Doctors in the place of prayer. Presidents are in the place of prayer. In the name of Jesus, men in military, man the door in the place of prayer. In the name of Jesus, we are releasing our sons and daughters in schools in the place of prayer. We take our place, Cantarabo. We change the atmosphere. We transform the atmosphere. We, re we, we, we re engineer, we restructure the atmosphere, the atmosphere of our nation in the place of prayer. In the name of Jesus, our home in the name of Jesus, in the place of prayer. In the name of Jesus, things are changing right now because we pray. When we pray, the fire fall. Not only will rain fall, but fire will fall. In the name of Jesus, fire fell from heaven. It was a rain of fire and it fell upon one place that men were praying. If the fire fell upon one place that people were praying the right prayer. You see, you can pray all kinds of prayer. In the day that the fire fell amen, in the upper room, people came to Jerusalem to pray. <laughs> I said people came to Jerusalem to pray, but it was a different kind of prayer. There is a new order of prayer. There is a new location in the spirit called the upper room where men are praying, where the fire, where God is connecting with people. Aligned to that which is called the upper room of the 21st century. In the name of Jesus, begin to pray. Openings. They came down and they bring direction to the people of the day. There are people gathering right now in all kinds of places. They're praying all kinds of prayer. Doing all kinds of things. But alas, he's not there. The season has passed. A new day has begun. You see, a new day began within the old system. While people came to Jerusalem on that day of Pentecost, are you, I hope you understand. On the day of Pentecost, people came to, to Jerusalem from different nations to pray, to pray, to offer sacrifice. <laughs> but there was a new order. Jesus. Jesus. 
They never got the memo. They didn't realize that God has changed his address. Oh, Spirit of God. I want to be found in your next location. I want to be found, oh Father. Not among the crowd, but among the cloud. Oh, Jesus. Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Help me, Father. I want to be found, oh, Father. Not where the crowd is, but where the cloud are gathered. Help us to be ready when the time comes. Help us to be ready when the time comes. You're speaking, but some are not hearing. Many are not hearing. There was a two meeting happening in Jerusalem on that day. Two meetings taking place concurrently, friends. Concurrently. <clears throat> concurrently. Two meetings taking place. One was approved of God. The other has been disapproved. It's easy to miss God. It's easy to miss him. I don't want to miss you, Father. I don't want to miss your voice. Your voice for this new day. I don't want to miss it, Lord. I don't want my people to miss it. Oh, Jesus, come on, prophesy. Prophesy, 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 prophesy. Prophesy, prophesy. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Robahashi, Ekalando, Zupakatayanda, Robakopo, Poshayede. Friends, listen. Pentecost is a typology of what God is doing in the last day. There were two meetings taking place concurrently in Jerusalem, two gatherings. One is to usher in the new. The other was a symbolic of the old. Yet the other had, had more people, had more resources. In fact, nobody knew what was happening in the upper room. Except for those that were there. Jesus told them, Tarry, wait for me until you be endued with power. Those few numbers changed the world. Changing the world has never been with multitude. In the world system, they say democracy, democracy carries the day. In the principle of the kingdom, theocracy carries the day. If you are with God, you are on the side of majority. The world say is, is democracy. Democracy is collapsing. Because at the end of the day, it is few people somewhere manipulating what they call democracy. Well, guess what? When you're on the side of God, you're never alone. One man stood as the entire army of Israel. In fact, he's not a man. He's still a lad, a young boy. <laughs> he's still a teenager. When David stood because he knew God. Hey, friends, do you know him? Or have you heard about him? Are you preaching a God that you heard about? Are you preaching a, sensi a sensi sensational God? Are you preaching what, your, what you read and somebody told you and what you, you have come to inspire and, and, and make yourself believe? Or have you encountered him? <laughs> you see, when a man encounters God, the way he speaks is different. Or a woman. There's confidence. There's boldness. Yet there's humility. But there is confidence. By this time tomorrow. <laughs> At my word. 
That's a man who know God. It's not try and error. If it's still try and error, you need to stay in the place of his presence until you are approved by him. Yes. Not all that are called are approved. Many are called, few are chosen. It means something happened among many those who are called, they were disapproved. <laughs> many are called, few are chosen. <laughs> what makes few to be chosen? Because they were the ones that were qualified. You can have a calling and be, dis and be disapproved. I say you can, have, you can be called. Because we say, I'm called of God. Yes, God can call you and still disapprove you. They were, they were those called, but they said they can only minister in the outer court. Leave them to do their thing in the outer court. Mm -hmm. And they're running with big names and big ministry and big titles. <laughs> and people are following them. No, they've been disapproved. They left them in the outer court. If you're called of God and approve of him, you will have a face-to-face -face ministry before him. Oh, Jesus. You will have a face-to-face -face ministry. Face to face, face to face. When they challenge Moses, <laughs> they say, Yeah, we're also leaders. I know you're also leaders. He said, But this one is my friend. I speak to him face to face as a friend would speak to his friend. I speak to Moses face to face. But yet, Mo Moses has never seen the face of God before. Remember, it was God who said to Moses, No one sees my face and live. So, what happened? Did you kill him before you showed him your face? <laughs> Ah, I want to know you, Lord. A generation must come out of this quagmire. A generation must come out of this mess. People today call Christianity. We've got to come out of it and come to the order of the kingdom life. And come to a place where, we, where your life becomes the lifestyle of your spirituality. You have to come out of the mess. Say, come out of them, my people. Come out of them doesn't mean that you hate them. You need to come out of them to rescue them. You need to come out of them to save them. You need to come out of them to show them, amen, what matters. You need to do that. Don't stay in their midst because you're feeling insecure. No, come out of them. Let them call you names. No one, no one does a, a work for God. No one works with God that is not called out of them. Aaron was called among his own. You have, to, you have to learn to be called out of, out of them, among them. Then they take you on a journey. They bring you to the place of encounter. You're baptized with fire. You're sent back to them to bring them out. It's going to take the extra mile to do the, to do the extraordinary thing. If you want to wake up when everybody's waking up, you want to read a few scriptures a day and you think it's okay. You just want to do what everybody is doing and you think you're going to have a different result. You lie to yourself. Your life must become a standard. Every day you must be climbing the hill of the Lord. You can't say you're climbing the hill of the Lord and you're still on the same level. No. A little here, a little there. Precept upon precept, line upon line. You're hearing God. You're hearing God. You've got to hear him in this brand new day. Your life depends on your ability to hear God. Your children, your child, your son, your daughter, your wife, your husband depends on your ability to hear God. Thou see the Lord. What do you hear? Where you hear, he speaks. Salabayam. Bring us in, O oh God. You've brought us out. But bring us in. Bring us in. Bring us in, O oh God. 
Bring us in. Bring us in. You have brought us out, Father. Bring us in. Bring us in into the reality of this new day. Bring us into your speakings and intentions and prophetic program. Bring us into the grace of this new day. Bring us into your spirit in this new day. Bring us into your place of joy. Bring us into the baptism of fire in this new day. Bring us in. Bring us in. Bring us in. Jesus. Bring us in. You brought us out. Bring us in. Bring every faculty. My soul. My mind. My thoughts. Oh. Oh. Zion awaits a people. Oh, Jesus. Zion awaits you. Zion awaits you. You've been brought out of Sinai. Zion awaits you. Come. Come. He says, come. Enter. Embrace him from afar. Let the joy of what you have seen cause you to continue to journey. Oh, Jesus. Come. If you're thirsty, come. If you're thirsty, come. You will drink. Let those who are thirsty come. Come drink. There's a newness of him that we need to drink. There is a freshness of him that we have been called to drink. Yes. An ageless wine we've been called to drink. Come drink of me. Come learn of me. Come partake of my table. Come. Come. Come hungry. Come thirsty. Come yearning. Come with your quest. Come with a passion. Come with a longing. So you can be filled. Jesus stood on that great day. He cried out. Let those two are thirsty come. He is a living water. You've got to be prepared to enter into this newness, friends. Thank you, Father. Oh, hallelujah. We bless you, Lord. We bless you, Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, guys. Thank you for joining this morning. It's an honor to share this time of prayer with you again, to share this time of great impartation an elevation in the spirit. May God continue to bless you, every one of you. Roderick, uh, Sister Tina, Sister Kumisa, my dear brother Bakiso, and all the people that have joined us. I also see my dear man of God, William. Thank you, everyone, for joining us this morning. Everyone that have tuned in, join us, wherever you've joined from. Thank you. I appreciate every one of you. May God continue to bless you. May you continue to rest his grace upon you your life may you continue to grant you a standing before him may you remain baptized in his presence with his fire god bless you i'll see you guys later on by god's grace bye-bye